Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to our compact, clean, and tileable design series for the early game using the Mark 1 Blueprint Designer. We are going to be working with coal power plants today because, well, that's the power plant you're probably using at this stage of the game. Now, I do want to point out that we have a couple options for this one. Uh, it's not quite as simply clean as the other builds, and that's because we got pipes going on here. So. There are three versions that I'm going to show you on how you can space your junction. And they're all going to have slightly different noodly looks. And then there's also another version that you can just fully use that will have more of a straight line but is a little bit inconvenient. So version one is spaced two to the side and it has this look. Version two is spaced one to the side like this. And then the final version is a diagonal, and so it's at least in a straight line, but it kind of looks the weirdest of all of them. So it's up to you which one you want to use. The build is pretty much the same regardless. And then the option, if you don't want any of these, is you have to move both of these a whole tile higher. You know, you move the belt up one higher and you move the pipe up one higher. And then everything pretty much works the same way. Um, it's just that you can connect straight in front of it with a straight up and down connector. I won't be using that version because that would require two meters more of head lift and just make everything taller. And I kind of like this compact build a little bit better. I personally like this one the best. I don't I don't know why. Um, in some ways, these are nicer, but I'm going to go with the two tile over build and you guys can choose whichever one you want. Uh, it's pretty, pretty obvious when you're spacing the junction, how you would, you know, just put it one tile over further. So we'll go over all of that here in a moment. So just a reminder, compact means it's small, clean means we don't clip, or at least we keep it to a minimum, and we uh, don't like things to be on the floor. So we keep belts off the floor, we keep pipes off the floor, so you wouldn't run into anything when you're tiling these designs around. And finally, it is tileable, meaning we can place as many of them in a row as we want. So our first goal is to get a coal generator backed into the corner here. If you don't know about nudging, you can lock a hologram with H and then you can nudge builds forwards and backwards. And that can be very helpful when placing buildings or when placing blueprints. So we're gonna plop down our generators here. And then what you wanna do, is, I mean, we can do power later, but you're gonna take your stackable pole and you're gonna place it kind of overlapping a little bit with the left side here. And you're gonna go up two tiles. And then you're going to place your stackable pipeline and you're only going to go up one tile. Again, if you want to have the the pipe drop vertically and go straight into the fluid input, you're going to have to go up two with that and three with this. Everything else should be pretty much the same from there. So then we're going to do the same thing on the other side here so we can connect over a belt. There we go up two. And, and how far out this one goes doesn't matter because you're going to end up removing this at the end. And it, like there is some clipping here, but personally, I don't mind it because it's the edges of things and heck when the stackables are kind of overlapping, it almost looks proper, you know, like it doesn't even look that weird to me. But, you know, if you don't like it, if you really are resistant to the smidgenest of clippings, then you, oop, I keep trying to use the jetpack. Uh, you can redo that now. A few people have mentioned when I've used Mark IV belts in the blueprints, they're like, Mark IV belts aren't early game. It's like, yes, they're not early game, so use Mark III belts. It, it works the same with Mark III belts, I promise. <laughs> um, in fact, things will clip less and probably look better with Mark III belts. So nothing changes if you're using Mark III belts. Obviously, the total throughput that you have available is lower if you're using Mark III belts, but the, the way you build it is exactly the same, and the functionality of the blueprint is exactly the same, so never to fear. If you don't have Mark IV belts, just use Mark III. And I will make a uh, Mark III and Mark IV version of this available in the comments uh, in the download section. I won't be using the Mark II pipelines because you don't get those for a while, and it's pretty unlikely you're still using coal power when you also have Mark II pipelines because at that point you have plastic and fuel. So, all right, let's get connecting. So these ones are pretty easy. You know, there's only two connections and let's start with the fluids. So again, you can do the two space, one space or no space version. The no space version, you have to have your connector angled away. Other, like if you just do it like that, they don't connect up sadly. So I'm gonna go with the two space version and it took me forever to figure this out. So here's your tips and trick to line up a pipeline junction 
Because when you hold control, these don't snap to freaking anything. I tried so many ways to get pipeline junctions to snap. When they're diagonal, oh, look at that. They snap beautifully. When they're horizontal, they snap beautifully. But when they're vertical, they snap for no man. Um, but a splitter, a belt splitter nonetheless, they snap to. It's the craziest thing. I, I actually just figured that out today when I was trying to, when I was kind of warming up for this video. I'm like, I have to figure out a way to get these pipeline junctions to snap because I don't want to have to do these janky line it up with certain pixels and you know, it'll be close but not perfect. I hate that. I like it to be nice and perfectly snapped. So, funnily enough, they snap to uh, belt splitters. So, you can get them snapped like that. And there you go, now they're all nicely arranged. And then yeah, you just connect up. The The build mode does matter here. Oop, what am I doing? Pipeline mark one. Uh, I was meaning to hit the R key. So, the only one that works is Noodle. None of the other ones will connect. So you go to Noodle and connect them up. And there you go, there's your water coming in for your coal power plants. And now we have to deal with the belt. So the belt is a little tricky here. For the first time, we can't just straight up connect because that's gonna clip through the pipe. And we can't put the pipe underneath the belt because then it doesn't connect right. And just for those who are curious, uh, quick aside, the reason you can't put the pipe underneath the belt is because the junctions will actually intersect with the coal power plant. And so you literally just can't put it that close. It's not possible, no matter how much you don't mind certain clippings. Okay, so back to what we were doing. We, we can't just connect up like normal. We already talked about that. So what you have to do is you have to take your belt and you have to come out, not one, which won't, it won't even let you build one, not two, but three clicks from the, the entrance. And then I personally like to dismantle the pole. That's up to you. And then you build your, your lift. Oh, again, I don't have a jetpack, So we're actually gonna have to climb up here. Barbaric. Uh, and then the splitter won't snap, unfortunately. So you have to do the trick that we've done before where you place the splitter on top of the lift and then you can hold control, then it will snap. Then you deconstruct these and then we can get our Mark three lift here and we can go from the belt up to the splitter or we can go from the splitter down to the belt it should end up in the same spot either way but just to be sure i would go top down from the splitter down to the belt you should hear the click either way now then there's this issue you may or may not like this if you don't like this you can dismantle the belt and then rebuild it and it will go further in to the conveyor lift when you do that. I don't know why exactly the conveyor lift connects to the end of a belt, but then when you're building a belt into a lift, it goes further in. I don't know why that works that way, but it does. So it's kind of up to you what you like the best. You're not looking into the end of this very often, so I personally don't care. But if you do care about that, you can just deconstruct the belt, reattach it, and then it'll be a little longer. So we're gonna do the same thing for these two guys. Get our initial snapping lift placed, put the splitters on top, and then we'll climb up here. Jump on top of things, get our splitters snapped, deconstruct, and then we rebuild our, our lifts. So we can compare if you guys wanna see, if you build it from top to bottom, it is spaced exactly in line with the other one we did. If we build it from bottom to top, I believe it's still spaced the same way. Yeah, so in this case, it, it literally doesn't matter. It works either way. Sometimes it matters which way you're building. If you had, um, like if you'd only built two squares out for the belt, it would change. You know, whether you build bottom to top or top to bottom. So there you go, there's all of our inputs. And then as usual, we will clean up the end here so that when you're tiling these together, they won't run into each other. And all you'll have to do is connect, you know, the um, output here to the input that is that belt and same with the pipe. You just connect the pipe across. The nice thing about the pipeline is it's bi-directional. So you could actually feed the water from the right or the left in this build which is pretty nice. And then the final thing to do is get these powered up. So the power lines, uh, to prevent clipping, you can't put them here. I wish you could, but it ends up running into some stuff and you can't put them there either because it runs into this top part. So you actually have to put them behind the, the blueprint, it's, or not blueprint, behind the frame of the building itself. I like to put it kind of right next to the corner, but this is a pretty flexible 
part of the build, you can place it wherever suits your fancy. Somewhere in this vicinity. And then we connect all those up and we are good to go. So another thing I want to go over in this video that I haven't been covering in my previous ones is how do you tile these if you're not going in a straight line? So we'll go ahead and save this as example coal power x3 mark 3 set directory examples oops not edit um go ahead and select our icon and save that bad boy so when you are tiling these together the easiest way to tile them is to just connect them you know one after another so you've got blueprint mode here and you just connect them two in a row Make sure they're lined up the same way. I usually lock it with H and then you may need to nudge it to get them as close together as they can be. It looks like in this case, they're actually correct. So we would just place that and then we connect up that belt with that one and this pipe with this one and we're done. However, sometimes you have more of a square area than a lengthy area and you want to make these blueprints and this applies to all of my blueprints. Um, coal power might actually be Oh, a weirder one to do this with, but we'll we'll show you how it works anyway. Often I will actually place them rotated 180 degrees next to each other, and then you can connect. So let's see, the inputs are right here. So we'll place it like this, and then we'll place the other one rotated 180. And this one we will need to do some nudging because it's, I don't know why it's so overlap happy here. I actually think, so that would be overlapping, but here the the lifts are nicely alternating. So we can actually place it as close as this. And and this is another way to tile them, right? And then we could tile this forwards and tile this forwards. So then you could have six on each side to get a total of 12. It all depends on, you know, what your rates are and such. But now you can take this belt and just wrap it around. And sometimes, depending on how the blueprints are, straight mode or default mode is going to look better. Straight mode often works, but sometimes default mode is better. And then, same thing, you may need a pipeline support to get the, the pipes noodling properly. Um, horizontal to vertical usually has a little bit better, like, corners, if you're into that sort of thing. And then, we need to connect these two, and then we can deconstruct the pipeline support. And there you go! Now you're looking at the same as if you had six in a row, but now there's six in a square. And that way, you know, things are a bit more in a box. And that applies to the smelters blueprint I've showed you. That applies to all of them. Obviously, the power from the two are not connected, so we're going to have to bring a power pole either across the front or the back. And that's going to be it. As always, thank you guys for watching. If you're enjoying this series, let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to support me making videos, head over to patreon.com slash crydax and stay tuned for our refineries and packagers videos for our clean, compact, and tileable early game blueprint design. I'll see you guys in the next video.